Today's a special day. We're back here in Baltimore, Maryland, heat of the summer, but I get to spend the day with one of my close friends who I grew up playing lacrosse with, Drew Westervelt, one of the greatest shooters of all time. He's also an entrepreneur like Mike and myself, and he started his company on a need that started in lacrosse, just like us. It's called Hex Performance Detergent. It's active wear for active people. It keeps us clean. We're gonna find out more about that. We're also gonna find out more about what makes him the best shooter in the game's history. Drew's nickname is Big Bear. I'm gonna give him a big hug. I told him I'd give the Big Bear a big <laughs> hug. <laughs> How you doing? Good, you? Good. When was the last time you had a catch? <laughs> Probably three years. Three years. When did we stop playing? 2018? Yeah. That was your last year? Yeah. With the Lizards? Yep. That year, you remember that game where <laughs> I took a shot, got hit late? You came in, roughed it up. You played the police officer. It was theatrics. You went in there and tried to get some shit going. No better target I ever played with than Drew. Because he's so big, all you have to do is just get it in the vicinity, and he's catching it. So I used to whip balls at his hip, well above his head, catch it, and finish. Bang! There it is. Boom. Were you always a shooter? I think that's where I had to like I assume that role, right? I think it was a little different in college. I probably carried the ball more, but I always played with Brendan. Brendan did a lot of ball carrying and Andy Gallagher in college, so I yeah. played a lot of off ball. Um, you know, I was lucky I got to play point and one man up so I could distribute. Um, and then when I, you know, got the pro, you know how challenging it is. Like, I didn't know if I was going to get a shot to play. I get drafted, go to Denver. Had a good practice, got in first game, was playing out in Denver and had a good first game. And then, you know, I think that was like confidence from there. You know how many good players come out. So many. Don't have a good first game, don't have a good first practice. And you're like, what, what's going on? I mean, it's, what, was your, what was your first game that was good though? How many goals you put in? I think I was like three and two. In your first ever game. Yeah, and it was like so fast, so pick it up off the end line go. And there was a couple early plays where we had breaks and I had good looks and you know, they went. And it was like a huge confidence win out of the gate. And you weren't you weren't heavily recruited no. either. No, it was like you UMBC. ended up at UMBC. What took you to UMBC? Uh, people. It was like UMBC, Delaware, or Drexel. My recruiting trip was with uh, Mundorf and Gallagher. Yeah. Um, loved them. And the, that was the attack line. Yeah. And then I ended up playing with the Brendan. best in the country, probably your senior year. So you shifted over to a shooter. But you have like the quickest release and soft hands. And it's kind of like interesting because we expect, at least in lacrosse, the slick off ball shooters sometimes undersized because you're taught, hey, if you don't have the size, have the skill. So you're one of the largest attackmen I've played with, which was easy because I had such a big target. If I was up here, I could just throw it and you'd catch it. So how did you get soft hands contradictory to your size? I think how we started, like my, my favorite thing in practice in games was shooting and getting out there and, you know, feeling really confident and just working on the spots I knew I was going to get my looks from. Yeah. You think uh, some of it was innate, some of it's poise, and then some of it's practice. Theoretically, being able to get the ball off fast, coaches say that. And I know you practiced it a lot, but this like almost half critical shot off of a swing that you have. You don't see it. You still don't really see it. You know, you're always taught to get your feet set and your hands ready and rely on your partner to give you a great feed. Just know like basketball or anything else, you can get rid of it. I think I knew I had to get, I shot it decently hard, but I knew I had to get it out quick and get it to a good spot and I'd have a really good shot at, at beating them, right? Yeah. So I tried to be really effective with getting my feet to the right place and relying on you and others to just put the ball so I could get it out quick. Yeah, but you'd sacrifice pace. 100%. for a quick release. 100%. And I think that's interesting is like, you never did the fastest shot competition. I would have gotten smoked. But you were always the top, one of the top two point getters in the league. And then always at the top, a number of goals from range. Uh, the only time I was successful in two points was when I played in Denver, cause they had grass. You were bouncing it? Bouncing it. And it would gain, it would skip and gain speed. For me, I know as an off ball player developing off ball skill, the biggest thing I work on is just poise. Sure. Because when we're practicing, even with defenses, 
you're typically all good. You're finishing a ton and tight. But in the game, you have people hammering you and like sticks are active. You should always anticipate a stick swiping at the ball and, and ideally it misses it. So you have a chance to catch it. But you were just always ready. What's going on in your head? I, I don't think there was a lot going on. I think that's why no. I was all right. Like right? if I'm sweeping to the right and there's so much action going on, you think I'm gonna shoot, but you're also like, if he passes to me, what's going on in your head? Well, I know you are. Going to pass you or shoot? It doesn't matter. Either way, I got back up or I'm, I'm ready. So there's no like anticipation pressure that built up. It was just kind of like, this is run a play. I think like any player, the anticipation builds up w when you miss the ones you know you should have early. I think one of the best games I had against New York was, I had, I don't know, seven or eight goals. But if I look at the highlights- Was that in from, Chesapeake? Yeah, yeah. Like, I was like, didn't, I don't think I got checked on eight goals. Yeah which is weird. You're just in a flow state? Yeah, it was just getting great looks. Everything that was hitting your stick, you're like, this is going in. Yeah, Bang. and it was moving where it was going and wasn't overthinking things, and it was, it was a ton of fun. I think, you know, when you start pressing yourself of like, oh, what, you know, overthinking your location or your, or your changing planes or whatever is where I struggled. The more I just fed off of what was happening, the better I played. I remember when we were playing against each other. We would come out to fields like this, and the first time you began your business was around treating turf, because this was new at the time. We would play in college, we would play on either grass or astroturf. Yep. Then we started using this synthetic artificial turf, and people were starting to come up with a bunch of injuries and then infections. Yep. And uh, you saw it a lot in the game. So you started Hex based on that, it evolved into clean equipment, which yep. is really funky and smelly and all parents can relate and players can relate to that. I mean, you and I still, well, you not anymore, but I still move with my equipment in the back of my truck, my goal in the back of my truck. For us, I think what's unique about Hex is it was never a laundry idea. Uh, and it really was turf, a piece of it, but we were, I was reading and we were playing in NHL, NBA, NFL venues, and was reading about NFL, NHL, NBA guys with MRSA staph infections, and they would just disinfect the facility and hope they got rid of it. Like, it'd be really cool if we could come up with something that one disinfected, but two prevented this issue from coming back, like a protective type of technology. And we found it worked in the locker room setting, uh, the training room setting, the, the playing surfaces. So you think synthetic turf, metals, plastics, all kinds of things we could treat, and not only get rid of these issues, prevent them. And like the light bulb was like, hey, synthetic turf's no different than what we're given as athletes and the gear we're wearing. And I can't find a solution when I have my gear bag at home Monday from flying home from where we were. Yeah. Started messing with that cleaning and protecting type chemistry in my washing machine and had a lot of success with my gear and apparel. And was like, wow, this is a really cool pivot. Like there, I can't find anything in the category that's explicitly talking about preserving performance fabric, its wickability, its performance, its longevity, its anti-odor piece and it kind of morphed into this white space we saw emerging because of the massive growth of athleisure and activewear, right? It's the yeah. biggest textile in the world. It's Which not, is like this stuff and yeah. what you're wearing, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not, everyone thinks it's niche for athletes, it's our whole wardrobe now. I remember you know, growing up we had cotton and then you had the sporting manufacturers coming out with their own like hybrid wear mm -hmm. and it wicked sweat better, it was more comfortable but I noticed that after like three or four rounds of wash that it would stink still. And I'm not great at doing my own laundry, but it was the only apparel. And some people could identify maybe with spandex, but because we're not wearing our spandex near our neck where we can smell it, it's underneath our clothes. It's like, maybe you don't pick up on it as much, but your t-shirts, your shorts that have this hybrid athleisure, what you call it, start smelling more. And I was asking you like, why I can't kill that smell. And you were like, that's what we're trying to solve for. Exactly, so a lot of the category that talked about sport products was fragrance based. Make sure you can't smell what's going on in fabric. So we looked at it, say, hey, what if we look at it from a chemistry perspective and actually use products that eliminate bacteria, prevent bacteria, mold, mildew, MRSA, staph, things like that. That indirectly will solve the odor issue, but it's also a health and wellness win too, right? Is, if we know that our stuff has odor or not lasting long, or we end up throwing out activewear, is that the activewear's fault or an aftercare opportunity? We believe it's an aftercare opportunity of the category just hasn't evolved like textiles have and what we wear and what our fashion is. So how do we 
find a, for us, how do we find an area that's underserved, that consumers have a pain point in? Yeah. And how does that also benefit a, a very large category in laundry, right? It's a eight to $10 billion category in the US. Athleisure is 150 billion. I mean, it yeah. trumps it by a long shot. Uh, so how do we find a spot, a white space that one, solves a consumer pain point, but two, benefits the category in like incremental sales? Like, There's two things. One is I have a pain point, it's really hot right now, yeah. and I'm soaking through my shirt. Yeah, that's so let's go get some coffee. <laughs> and then two, I wanna talk about what it is about lacrosse people, lacrosse professionals mm -hmm. that have this knack for entrepreneurship and then how you become, like I had to stop you because of your domain expertise. I'm like, You're, this guy's talking about baby fabrics, adult fabrics, athleisure, cotton, and I'm like, dude, so what, what, what's like ticking up here? How'd you get so smart? So let's let's Hold get on. some caffeine. <laughs> See, he's obsessed with lacrosse. He'll, he'll never, he'll never not be. At what point in your career did you notice yourself packing your laptop with your lacrosse equipment when you were on the road? Very early on. Really? Yeah, it was like, you know, too many bags. This brand and product is, was really built during my playing career for solving challenges I needed, right? I wanted all the different companies that sponsor the leagues, I wanted that stuff to perform and, and, and frankly, be in a better state than it was for when I was wearing it. And that's yeah. not just apparel, that's gear. I mean, think of all the uh, protective equipment we wear that we never clean. This like bottle that's deodorizing spray, unstink your stuff, and I was like, you shoot this on your shirt, and you're like, no, you can put it on your pads, you can put it in your shoes. 